Hi, Jamie here at The Hedge Teacher. Tell me, what is the difference between this and this? This Monopoly money and this Fiat money? Well, as it is, they're just made on paper, but not a lot. So, what is Fiat money? Fiat money is a currency that a government has declared to be legal tender without intrinsic value. That is, it is not backed by a physical commodity. It's valueless, but it serves as a medium of exchange. Also known as fiduciary money. The term fiat comes from the Latin fiat, let it be done, used as an order, a resolution or decree. A fiat system is based on a government's mandate that the, the paper currency that it prints is legal tender for making financial transactions. Now, there have been 786 fiat currencies. Now, 607 of those are now worth zero. The first recorded use of a fiat money was in China about 1000 AD, and it's been used by so many countries since then, usually with commodity, a commodity currency. Commodity money is created from goods like a, a precious metal such as, as gold or silver, like I have here, and has other uses. This is what we call, the gold and silver is what we call real money. The pound sterling is the oldest fiat currency still in existence. It was founded in 1864. To think of it as a one a historical context, you can put it into, into three phases. The first money used was a valuable object, such as you know the gold or the silver that we had, or maybe fur or grain. Second, money circulated was backed up by gold and could be converted to gold at a fixed price at any time. And third, paper money circulated, but was not backed by anything other than the government's promise to refrain from printing too much money as it, to make it worthless. As an example of this, let's take a look at the US dollar. This one here. Now, the US abandoned the gold standard in the early 1930s. President Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1933 started to cut ties with the gold standard to pump money back into the economy to help lower interest rates and get them out of the Great Depression. Before 1971, the United States dollar was actually backed by something tangible, gold. For every dollar out there, there was a certain amount of gold put away to represent its value. From 1944 to 1971, the Bretton Woods Agreement fixed the value of 35 US dollars to one troy ounce of gold. The system collapsed and what became known as a Nixon shock, and it shocked a lot of people. It was a series of economic measures taken by United States President Richard Nixon in 1971 that included unilaterally cancelling the direct convertibility of the US dollar to gold. This was to stop the foreign governments of the world sapping the US gold reserves. It would change not only the US economy, but the world economy as a whole. Since then, a national fiat Monies have been used globally with freely floating exchange rates between the major currencies. But wait, you may be thinking, if the US dollar or any other currencies in the world are worth no more than a promise, why keep printing and printing and printing? By printing more, inflation increases. The people lose their faith in the currency of that country. Prices go up, the value of the currency goes down. But our country promised not to print too much as to make it worthless. The problem, of course, was that sometimes governments broke their promise. Following World War I, Germany printed so much money that what you could purchase for one mark in 1918 
cost more than one trillion marks in 1923. Now, there have been many other countries that have done the same in the not-so-distant past. China, 1945. And then you have the Zambibian dollar in 2009. In these cases, the government lost credibility so that it could not borrow to finance large budget deficits. And then they had to pay its bills with massive amounts of newly printed fiat money. Now, fiat money can serve as a good currency if it can handle the roles that an economy needs of its monetary unit, like storing value, providing a numerical account and facilitating exchange. Because fiat money is not a scarce or is a, not a fixed resource like gold, central banks have a much greater control over its supply, which gives them the power to manage economic variables such as credit supply, liquidity, interest rates, and money velocity, for good or for bad. The main reason you need to know this is so that you understand how unstable your fiat currency, your money, really is. While it's important to have some money put away for a rainy day, it's also very important for your own financial future to have investments and forms of currency that are not controlled or backed by a certain country, like gold and silver. The currency that we have, this fiat currency, is like electricity. The more it's used, the better it is. But if you stop using it and start hoarding it, that is then when we start to have problems. The velocity decreases and becomes worthless. So you need a backup plan. We will look at these and other things in other videos. But now start looking at your spending cycles, your spending habits, your financial records. Look at your bank statements. Go back two, three, maybe six months and have a look and see where your money is going. And the money you do have, spend it on assets, not liability. Remember, assets put money into your pocket. Liability takes money out. Now, I recommend you reading an Uncle Eric series of books by Richard J. Mabry. This is the second edition. If you are interested in an unbiased, propaganda-free information about our history and economy, and are open-minded enough to read the full series, then this is for you. This sort of thing is what should be taught in our schools. He also underlines the common law we should all live by. Number one, do all you have agreed to do. And two, do not encroach on other persons or their property. Now, that was explaining to you a little about fiat currency, the pros and the cons. If you enjoyed this video, you want to see more, please like, share and subscribe. We all have to hedge our own future. If we don't look after ourselves, nobody else will. Until next time, this is Jamie at The Hedge Teacher.